Hi everybody, it's Deborah from PeopleLovingAnimals.com. Thanks for stopping in and watching my video. Today's video is going to be about taking your dog on a vacation, tips for traveling with a dog. Uh, now we are on my website, PeopleLovingAnimals.com for this video. This is an article I've written for my website. It's um, all about taking your dog on a vacation and tips for traveling with a dog. In the description box for this video, I'm going to give you the link for this article. Okay, so we're not going to go through this whole article here we're not going to read it all I'm just using this article kind of as a template or a guide uh, for our video so that I can remember the steps that I want to share with you but in the description box I will give you a link for this article on my on my website so let's go ahead and get started um, before you decide to take Fido on a trip with you consider whether it's feasible and whether it's even beneficial for the dog uh, taking your dog on vacation takes care and planning you know I think one of the most important things for people to understand when it ta when you're talking about whether or not to take your dog with you whether it's on vacation or just going someplace is you can't leave it up to the dog of course they want to go with you and of course they're giving you the sad face when you're leaving and everything and um, of course they're going to be home uh, you know sad if you're going on vacation or whatever but you need to make the decision that's best for the dog and you know your dog can't plan ahead he can't know what's going on or what you're going to be doing on vacation or anything so you really have to make the right decision as to is this even beneficial for the dog is this going to be okay for the dog and is it going to be okay for you you. Now I'm going to ask you, this is going to be a pretty thorough video. I'm going to give you lots of information and lots of tips and I'm going to ask you to stick with me through the end of the video because there's probably going to be a lot of things in here that you're, that you're not thinking of. Okay. Um, so you know, any veterinarian or professional dog trainer will tell you that before you decide you're to take your dog on any sort of trip, uh, you should always consider what you're going to be doing on the trip. Okay, like, you know, if you're going to go on vacation, but most of the places that you're going, the dog won't be able to go. Like if you're going to be going in sightseeing places like museums, galleries, or restaurants, your dog's not going to be able to go with you to those places on the vacation. Do you know what I mean? So he's going to be stuck home or stuck alone in the hotel room uh you know and even if your dog is comfortable with that which most dogs aren't it's not any fun for him do you know what I mean? So you do have to consider what you're going to be doing, even if you're going out for the day, or if you're going for the weekend, or if you're going on a long trip, you really have to be consider what are we going to be doing while we're on this vacation? And is it something the dog's going to be able to do with us? And if the majority of things you're doing, the dog's not going to be able to do with you, you're better off getting a pet sitter or getting a friend to babysit your dog or boarding the dog while, while you're away, because it's just going to end up with a bad situation where he's stuck alone in in a hotel room probably petrified do you know what I mean so that's the first thing to consider um, if we're talking about short car rides um, taking your dog someplace you really need to buckle up your dog for safety you know dogs get hurt in car accidents just like people do now this is a car seat that you can actually click on you can purchase this on Amazon um, and I'm giving you links here for a safety harness and dog seat so that you can buy one. I had a seat similar to this uh, to one of my uh, miniature dock dachshunds. And a couple of things. First of all, for the little dogs, it's a nice booster seat so they can see, you know, you know, so they can see out or whatever. Also, it keeps them safe, obviously, if there's a car accident. And also, it keeps the two of you safe because if they're wandering around the car while you're driving, uh, that's not a good thing. Now, I tell a story in my article here. I had a miniature doxy named Maggie, and she was a tiny little thing. And uh, I let her I didn't have a car seat for her and I would let her wander around the car well one time she jumped down onto the floor on her side she was on the passenger side but she was able to get through to the floor on the driver's side and she literally actually crawled under the brake pedal she crawled under it and she was in I could not stop the car I couldn't put my foot on the brake and you know and nearly cracked up the car trying to pull over to the side of the road and get her out of there so you know it can be really distracting and it can be really dangerous when your dog is traveling around the car and uh, so you know it's better to get a car seat or a safety harness if you're going on a, uh, a car trip um, with your dog um, you know, I, I say here, avoid letting your dog stick his head or paws out the window. You know, it's one of the cutest things on earth to see a dog traveling down the road and, um, you know, they're, they're 
have their nose in the breeze and everything, but you do have to be careful with that. You know, it's just like being on a motorcycle uh, or, you know, if you've got your own head out the window or if you've ever been on a boat, you know, stuff can fly in your eyes, you know, and, you know, dogs, for example, certain breeds like a uh, Boston Terrier, you know, they have those buggy eyes and, you know, it's just not good for the wind to be whipping on their eyes. So, you know, I just, I just like to mention it when you're riding in the car with your dog, just, just make sure they're okay. And, you know, you might want to just keep the air conditioning on and just crack the windows, let them sniff the air, let them put their head out for a couple of minutes and, you know, just be careful of it. That's all I'm saying. I don't want to ruin any dog's fun, but just be careful of it. I say here that dogs should never ride in the front seat with you. They can distract you from driving. If you stop short, they can be thrown into the windshield or injured by airbags. Um, the same little doxy that I mentioned to you earlier, she was once thrown from the, the front seat. Um, I remember I was married at the time and I was driving my husband's pickup truck. It was a Dodge pickup truck and I had taken her with me and she and I were sitting on what in those days, it was a bench seat. And I stopped fast and that poor little dog went splat. I mean, she splatted on the floor of that truck and I felt terrible and she wasn't hurt, but she could have been seriously hurt. And so, you know, I wish I would have had a car seat for her. And that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, if you're going to have them in the front seat with you or anywhere in the car, they really should be either in a crate or they should be in a dog seat or they should have a safety harness. Uh, we're going to get to more of the vacation kind of stuff, but I'm just giving you some trips on, on traveling with your dog in general here. Long car, car rides. First of all, keep their collar and their tags on. Uh, you know, if you're going to take a long road trip, it might seem more comfortable to go ahead and take your dog, dog's collar off. But you got to remember, first of all, if you're in a car crash, <laughs> you know, the dog panics and runs away. You know, you may never see him again. He doesn't have his tag on. Um, you can do, um, you know, microchips. You can put their name and phone number on their on their tag but make sure your dog always has their name and phone number on them um and you know so your dog can be given back to you if you should have an accident or if he runs away at, at a pet you know a, a gas stop or something um later in this article i'll give you the link for a, a website called uh, pet tags.com and that you can go there and for really cheap you can get a little pet tag that you can put on your dog's collar with your name and your and your phone number all right. Uh, remember, your dog needs food, water, and pee break breaks. Uh, you know, give your dog a small meal, um, a few, you know, at least like an hour before you go on the trip. A lot of dogs will have nausea on a car ride and uh, you know, might want to talk with your vet about that, about what to do if your dog gets car sick. Uh, but don't, you know, don't throw them in the car with a full stomach, you know, give them a meal a little while before. And then, you know, stops for breaks is needed. Uh, you know, don't allow the dog to eat and drink in the car. You know, you don't want to have water sloshing all around the car. Every hour or two, or when the dog seems restless, you know, you can both get out and stretch your legs, get a drink, go to the bathroom, and uh, always make sure that your dog is on the leash before you open the car door. Okay, you don't want to risk them getting away from you, especially if you're far from home. And remember, you know, your dog's in a strange place. They're in a strong, you know, they're in a strange environment. You know, what if you have, a, say, a male German Shepherd and you stop at a truck stop to go to the bathroom and you open up the door and your German Shepherd sees a cute little white female poodle and runs out and chases the poodle? I mean, you just don't know what they're going to do. It's You're not at home in your own yard. Okay, so make sure they're on the leash before you even open the car door. And also just as a general rule, it is never safe to leave a dog alone in a car. Even if it's, if the window is open and it's only a few minutes, realize that you're taking a risk if you do this. Okay. That's a whole nother article and you know, the risks, it is not okay to leave the dog in the car for, you know, it's just, just realize you're taking a risk if you do it. Now, I'm going to take a little break here just to tell you about this. I'm an affiliate for a website called The Online Dog Trainer. Um, it's run by a professional dog trainer and behavioral specialist who calls himself Doggy Dan. Uh, I promote this website constantly um, on my website, peoplelovinganimals.com. It's what I recommend for dog training and virtually to get the uh, proper instruction and help for any dog behavioral issue that you can think of. And the reason I'm mentioning it here is that he does a little video that's in this article and you're going to be able to click in here and watch this video. I'm going to play it for you for a minute, but you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to hear it very well, but let me just show you.
Aren't they cute? Now, those are two little dachshunds. And this is a training video that Doggy Dan has on his website for a calming an anxious dog in the car. This is a video about two little dachshunds that would really get upset on a car ride. And so he did a training video on what to do, you know, for one thing with these dachshunds. One of the answers was to put a blanket over them and to give them a place to hide in the car. You know, sometimes traveling in the car is very stressful for dogs. It's very scary for them. You know, they're going down the road 55 miles miles an hour. They've never seen anything like it, you know. So if your dog is upset in the car, uh, you know, giving them a crate to hide in or giving them a blanket to hide under. But this is just a little video by Doggy Dan um, about calming anxious dogs in the car. And so, um, like I say, in this um, article that I'm going to give you the link to, I'm going to give you the link here for the online dog trainer. So you can check into that. There's more than 250 dog training videos on that website and it is cheap. It's not expensive. And also in the description box for this video, I'll give you the link um, to Doggy Dan's website so that you can check it out. Um, it is it is pretty cool. Now let's get back to uh, trips for uh, traveling with your dog and taking your dog on vacation. Uh, you know, I always get nervous whenever I think of dogs on airplanes. I don't know about you, but it just makes me so nervous. Um, you know, the best way to ensure your dog's safety on a plane ride is to travel with them in the cabin. You know, have them with you. Um, if you're, unless your dog is small enough to fit under your seat in a travel safe carrier, which is the way that, you know, they recommend little dogs travel, then it's recommended that you don't fly with your dog. Um, if you can't keep them in a little, a carrier safe with you in the cabin and in the airport. I say if you don't have to take them, don't take them. I don't know. There's just so many risks involved. But if you absolutely must um, take them and they can't be in the cabin with you because they're too big, uh, then be in communication with the airline personnel. Make sure your dog's in a travel safe carrier or crate. Make sure that that crate is clearly labeled live animal. Um, take your dog uh, to the vet's office and they will be able to give you a lot more advice on traveling with your dog. Make sure that you learn your, your airline's pet policy. Uh, there's often fees associated with traveling with your dog. Some breeds are never allowed on a plane. So, um, like I said, if your dog can safely fit with you in a little travel carrier under your seat on the plane and stay with you on the plane in the airport, then there's still, you know, you still have to take precautions for the comfort of that dog. But if they're not, if they're too big, my advice is don't travel with them on a plane unless you absolutely have to. And if you have to, like I say, Talk to your vet, talk to the airline personnel, look at more videos like this one that you're watching right now and make sure that you know what you're doing when you're traveling with your dog. Um, when you're traveling with your dog, they should um, always be in a carrier or a crate um, and you should make sure that it's the right size. Um, this is a link here. I'll give you a couple of links in this article uh, to shop for crates. Um, and your dog should be able to stand, sit and turn around comfortably inside the crate or the carrier. Um, here's an important thing, especially if you've never traveled with your dog before, or if your dog has never been on a trip, is to prepare your dog to be alone in the crate or the carrier for hours, okay? You've got to practice with your dog before they get on the plane, or before they get in the car, or before they find themselves on the camping trip, or before they find themselves in a hotel. Uh, the dog should be able to associate his crate with positive experiences and be happy to spend some time in the carrier or the crate without you right there, okay? So give your dog, I would say even several weeks before your trip, before your flight, have the carrier um, or the crate open in your living room, let the dog hang out in it, feed the dog in there sometimes, give him a you know, give him his blanket and his toys just so that he's he's comfortable with the crate and so that the crate or the carrier is familiar to him before you go on the trip. Okay. Um, also, uh, create a comfortable crate. Um, you know, if your dog, for example, has to be checked into the belly of the plane, um, when you're traveling, which like I said, that just makes me so nervous. But one suggestion would be to freeze a bowl of water and put it in the crate. That way it's not spilling while they're trying to get him on the plane, but it'll melt, um, uh, by the time the dog gets thirsty or he can at least lick on it, you know? Um, and you might attach a small bag of dog food, um, outside of the carrier or the crate so the airline staff can feed your dog and give them treats. Uh, make sure 
sure that your dog has a blanket and a toy uh, from home, a safe toy um, from home to comfort him. Um, you know, camping. Camping is one of the most uh, popular vacations um, for families, and people oft often bring their dog. But you do have to realize, they're like I said before, they're away from home. They're not in their own yard. There's going to be so many new smells and sights for them to explore, and they're going to be excited, and there might even be other dogs around. But just be aware of the dangers. Wild animals, for example. You don't want your dog to be in the woods on a camping trip and come nose to nose with a possum. Okay, you don't want that. You know, animals carry diseases. I'm sorry, but a poss possum can rip a pit bull to shreds. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, it can be dangerous. And especially for a small dog, if they end up having a confrontation with a raccoon or a wild animal, there's poisonous plants. Um, God forbid if your dog gets lost. Um, you know, keep your dog on a leash on the camping trip. Keep them with you. Just, uh, you know, and, you know, I know that it might be uncomfortable, but when you're in the tent or you're in the RV or the cabin, keep the dog inside with you. Don't leave them outside and don't leave them outside tied to the outside of the tent. Like I said, they're they're at risk out there for weather hazards, um, encounters with a wild animal. You know, just really take care of your dog on a camping trip and watch out for them and, and make sure that they're safe. Hotels, um, you know, there's a few things about how hotels, you know, that people don't understand. Uh, you know, sometimes people, they leave their dog in the hotel and they go out for dinner or whatever, and they think everything's fine. Everything's not fine. Okay. You please be aware of this. Uh, you know, your dog could very well be petrified. You know, they could be terrified in that hotel room by themselves, especially if the maid comes in. You know, if you have a dog in a hotel and they're going to be scared, you know, you might want to put the do not disturb thing, you know, clean your room yourself. Um, put the do not disturb thing so the maid doesn't come in there. I mean, imagine being a little dog or any dog and there you are stuck in a hotel and some strange lady comes in with a vacuum cleaner. You know, it's like, like I said, don't just think it's okay. It might not be okay. Your dog might be scared in the hotel room, really scared, you know, and, um, you know, it's, you just got to be, you just got to be careful. You just got to be careful about it. Check the hotel policy before you book the hotel. Um, you know, make sure it's okay to bring the dog to the hotel. Um, there's one hotel that I know of and I know about it because I worked there for a short time. And they allowed um, pets to be in the room, but they also had a very strict policy where, um, first of all, they charged, they charged a fee for the dog to be in the room. And they had a very strict policy where before you left the hotel, you had to leave your cell phone with the front desk. And if the dog was upset, if the dog was barking or crying, especially if they were disturbing other guests, you had to be available via, via cell phone. And they didn't care whether you were out to dinner, if you were in the middle of giving a concert, uh, you know, whatever you were doing, you were to come right back to the hotel and get that dog. Do you know what I mean? So hotels do take it seriously and dogs are not allowed to be crying and barking and bothering other guests. And some hotels, you know, they're owned by animal lovers and they're not going to tolerate you leaving your dog in the hotel terrified. Okay. So like I say, just be conscious of it. You, you have to really understand what that means for the dog. Uh, bring your, if you're going to stay in a hotel, bring your dog's crate or their dog bed from home. Um, they need something familiar with them. Uh, you know, they need something to try to feel comfortable and at ease when they're in the hotel. Make sure, like I said before, that your dog has pro proper ID. Um, they can have a microchip or they can have a tag with your name and phone number on it. And make sure it's your cell number that you put on your dog's collar. Okay. Cause if your dog get lost, gets lost, especially while you're traveling, you don't want them calling your home number. You're not home. You know, so make sure that you have a cell number. Now I got my little pet tags from pettags.com. I'm giving you the link here. And I put two numbers. I put my own cell phone number and I also had a friend's number just in case something happened to me. If they had been in a, if we'd been in a car accident or something, I wanted there to be two phone numbers, my cell number and also my friend's phone number on my dog's tag. Uh, you know, and like I said, always make sure they have their tags. Always make sure they have ID on them when you're traveling with them. 
Also, like I've already alluded to, you know, consider your dog's comfort and safety. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if if this trip isn't going to be fun for the dog and if it's not going to be okay for the dog and if it's going to be scary for the dog, you know, then don't take them. And I say here in my article, I go to several festivals uh, during the summertime and I always get upset when I see people have brought their dogs. You know, the, especially in the summertime, the dogs are panting. They're too hot. Um, they're forced to be to spend the entire day walking on hot pavement. You know, hot black pavement, especially in the summertime, it can burn the pads of their feet okay so please be aware of this and honestly do you really think the dog's having a good time you know um so sometimes it's just even though yeah i know the dog's giving you a sad face i know you don't want to leave the dog home alone uh you know but you might be better off especially on hot days don't make don't drag the dog around the festival all day on hot pavement leave the dog at home where they're cool and comfortable okay um you know it's okay to take your dog to a festival take them someplace but just keep your dog's comfort and safety in mind how long are we going to be gone uh you know will the dog be able to walk in grass is it going to be on the hot pavement is there going to be a place for the dog to go to the bathroom um, you know, are, you make sure, you know, is your dog going to be able to eat and drink uh, when they need to? So always just before you leave with your dog, before you take your dog anywhere, consider their comfort and their safety. Uh, you know, it might be okay for them to go with you and, and maybe not. Um, now we're getting to the end of this article. Taking your dog on vacation can, uh, with you can be fun. As long as you do planning ahead of time, consider all the aspects of your trip, consider your dog's safety and their comfort. And, uh, you and your dog can have a great time camping in the woods, hiking on the trails, running on the beach. You know, your dog deserves a vacation too. Um, uh, but I just, I wanted to do this video. Just, you know, you've got to take it seriously and you really have to consider, consider everything. So a couple of things before we end this video. First of all, um, I'm going to give you the link to this article down in the description box. I'm going to give you that link uh, to Doggy Dan's website if you need other um, information about dog training. Um, and also, I am an affiliate for several things. Like when I've given you the links in this article for um, cat care or dog carriers and crates and car seats. I'm an affiliate for Amazon. And when I give you those links, if you buy those items, I make a commission. Okay. So I am an affiliate. I do make money on this website. It's how I'm able to do it for a living. This is what I do for a living. Um, but the thing is I donate 10% of all the commissions I earn on this website to animal charities. All right. So say if you were reading this article and you took my advice and you bought a doggy car seat for your car and you clicked on one of my links and you bought it, I get a commission for that. And that's how I'm able to um, have this website and do and be a, um, an Internet marketer for a living and do this website as my full time job. And I give 10 percent of that commission to animal charities. So if you're on my website, the homepage, people loving animals dot com, or if you're in this article, you can click here. You'll see a list of animal charities that I donate to. Also, in the description box um, for this um, video, I'm going to give you a link to subscribe to my dog lover's email list. It's an email subscriber list. I've written hundreds of articles and done tons of videos on this website about dogs, dog safety, dog training, dog health. I've done product reviews. Um, I make recommendations for where to get pet supplies, where to get medications, all that sort of thing. And um, you can see all these articles on my website. Website. And if you're a subscriber to my email list, then about every five to seven days, you get a new email from me and it'll, it'll contain either an article about dogs or it'll contain a video about dogs. And um, you can unsubscribe anytime. And um, like I say, when you get these emails from me, you know, click in and read the ones you're interested in and delete the ones that you're not. One last thing before we end, I am going to ask you to please, if you like this video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to this channel. There's lots of videos on here. I'm adding new videos all the time. And please share this YouTube channel, this video, and my website, peoplelovinganimals.com, with your friends who are dog lovers and also cat lovers, because I have lots of cat stuff on my website, too. And uh, like I say, 10% of all the commissions I make on this website 
I donate to animal charities. So I hope this article has been helpful to you. And I'm so glad that if you're taking your dog somewhere, that you're taking the time to go online and get information about, you know, being safe with your dog. And, and I give you a lot of credit for doing that. And um, I love when people love their animals and take care of them and care about them. So I hope this article or this video has helped you and I thank you again so much for watching. And again, my name is Deborah and my website is peoplelovinganimals.com. Thanks again so much for watching. Bye-bye.